Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a quintic equation. We have x to the fifth power minus x to the fourth power equals one. And we're gonna be looking for x values. Can we solve a quintic in general? No, because there is no quintic formula. I repeat, there is no quintic formula. We have a quartic formula, a cubic formula, and a quadratic formula. Hopefully you're familiar with at least one of those, right? But then the question comes up, is this equation factorable? What do I mean by that? Let's go ahead and put everything on the same side and see if we can factor this expression. So the question is, is x to the fifth minus x to the fourth minus one factorable? It may be, I don't know, probably not very easily, but we're gonna do a little bit of something like a little manipulation to make it factorable. So let's go ahead and do this. Replace x with negative y. Obviously we can do that, right? So when you do it, uh, x is gonna be replaced with negative y. So it's gonna look like this. There's double negatives, but uh, don't worry about that. We're gonna simplify that. One is gonna be unchanged. When you raise a negative quantity, this doesn't necessarily mean y is negative, but something with a minus sign. When you raise something with a minus sign to the fifth power, the minus sign is gonna stay because negative one to the fifth power is negative one, right? So this will be negative y to the fifth. But in the case of even powers, the negative is gonna disappear. So it's gonna be positive, but there's a minus sign. So it's gonna be minus y to the fourth minus one equals zero. Now, why is this a good thing? I'll show you. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by negative one to get y to the fifth plus y to the fourth plus one equals zero. So this is the expression we're gonna to try to factor. Make sense? How? So I'm gonna go ahead and start with this. And I'll do a little trick here, which you should know if you're doing any type of math competition, math olympiads, or if you just like math in general, you should know these tricks. I'm gonna go ahead and subtract y squared and add that. But the way I add it is gonna be after the y to the fourth because I need to follow the you know, standard form. And then I'm gonna go ahead and split it up to, into two pieces. But before I do that, notice that the negative y squared and the positive y squared cancels out leaving us with the original expression. Does that make sense? Now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna separate this into two groups like this and like that, and you can factor it. Let me show you. Here we have a common factor y squared which gives us y cubed minus one. And here I have an expression which I'm gonna deal with separately. So I'm gonna leave it like this for now. And let me go ahead and look at each one separately. First of all, this one is a difference of two cubes. So y cubed minus one can be factored into y minus one times y squared plus y plus one. It makes sense, right? Hopefully. And then this expression right here, I'm gonna go ahead and do it a little differently. This expression actually can be turned into a complete square by adding y squared and by subtracting it. And why are we doing it? Because this makes it a perfect square. Take a look at this. This is y to the fourth plus two y squared plus one. And this is y squared squared. So this in other words is y squared plus one quantity squared minus y squared squared. And if you, sub if you factor it using difference of two squares, then it's gonna look like this, y squared plus one plus y squared, right? Actually, I probably made a mistake somewhere. Oh yeah, I was supposed to add y squared and then subtract y squared, not y to the fourth. So this will just be y squared minus y squared minus y squared. So it's gonna look like this then. We have y squared plus one plus y from difference of two squares and y squared plus one minus y. But it's better to write it this way y squared plus y plus one in standard form, and then y squared minus y plus one. So it's kind of weird, but that's something you should definitely know or even memorize that y to the fourth plus y squared plus one can actually be factored like this. Okay, fourth powers have some interesting properties and Sophie Germain is another formula that deals with fourth power polynomials. But this is how we can factor that piece. So, we were able to factor this. Let me go ahead and forget about this and just write the result. This can be factored into y squared plus y plus one times y squared minus y plus one. Just copied off of this, okay? Now, let's go back here and clean this area actually. So we can go ahead and 
uh, get our work done. Now we can just now look at this one more time. Since these two things are being added, they have a common factor. Why? Because look at this and look at that. So now I'll start over with this. This expression can be written as y squared times y cubed minus 1, which is y minus 1 times y squared plus y plus 1. And then the second piece, y to the fourth plus y squared plus 1, can be factored into y squared plus y plus 1 multiplied by y squared minus y plus 1, which I, oops, I probably need this, need to move this to the left so we can fit it on the screen. And now this becomes that. Okay. I can't write without an ink, right? So now, notice that this is a common factor. So we can go ahead and factor this even more. Take out y squared plus y plus 1. And then you're going to have the product of these two things, which is y cubed minus y squared plus this. Plus y squared plus, plus y squared minus y plus 1, which is this one. But y squared cancels out, leaving us even with a simpler expression. In other words, y to the fifth plus y to the fourth plus 1 can be factored into y squared plus y plus 1 times y cubed minus y plus 1. Who would have known, right? <laughs> Obviously, I'm going to show you another method to do this, and hopefully that'll clear things up a little bit. I, actually, that was intended to be the, the first method, but I started with the second method, so I guess we should call this the second method. So we started with the second, and we'll continue with the first, okay? And yes, that doesn't make the first second method second method. So anyways, I was able to factor it, but this is everything is in y. So I have to back substitute. And remember, x equals negative y or y equals negative x, right? So now you can go ahead and replace y with negative x. This is going to be unchanged. This is going to change into minus x. And this is going to be a negative x cubed. This is going to be a positive x plus 1. And of course, you can definitely... If you want to negate uh, both sides and write this as x squared minus x plus 1 multiplied by x cubed minus x minus 1. Maybe there is a way to factor it this way, but I didn't want to bother with that because substitution makes it a lot easier. And in my opinion, this one is actually easier to recognize as factorable. Now, this one is really easy, don't you think? It's quadratic. So if go, let's go ahead and solve it negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, 1 minus 4, uh-oh, that is a negative 3, but that's just a complex or imaginary number, so you can kind of write the solutions this way. So we don't have real solutions, too bad, but remember, this is a quintic, an odd number polynomial, right? Odd degree. So it has to intersect the x-axis. There is no way it can avoid it. Even powers can do it, odd powers, no way. There has to be one a real solution. And you got to remember, the complex solutions, the non-real ones, come in conjugate pairs. That's why when you have a fifth power, they're going to pair up, but you'll still have a leftover. And again, there's no quintic formula. That's why we couldn't solve it with the quintic formula. If somebody claims that there's a quintic formula, which is not true, and by the way, show us how you can solve this problem with the quintic formula. I'd be curious to learn. So anyways, we got two complex non-real solutions. What about this one? We can actually deal with that, uh, that one separately. And we can use the cubic formula. This problem is awesome because we're using a lot of algebra here. That's my favorite. So first step is going to be putting the constant on the right-hand side and then remembering the expression a plus b quantity cubed. If you subtract from this negative 3ab times a plus b, guess what that leaves you with? a cubed plus b cubed. Which is awesome. In this case, we're going to go ahead and set this equal to x and x. Therefore, if you write an equation like this, x cubed minus 3abx equals a cubed plus b cubed, guess what? x equals a plus b is going to be one of the solutions. That's what we assume. Okay, makes sense? So now comparing these two equations, coefficient by coefficient, you realize that 3ab is supposed to be 1, which means ab is 1 third. And then this needs to be 1 as well, which means a cubed plus b cubed is equal to 1. If you cube both sides, you get a cubed b cubed equals 1 over 27. And from here, if you isolate b cubed, you can write it as 1 minus a cubed. And then that's something you can substitute here. And that gives you a cubed times 1 minus a cubed equals 1 over 27. If you distribute and put everything on the same side, you're going to get a to the 6 minus a to the 3rd plus 1 over 27, 
equals zero. This might look like an hexic or an hectic equation, but it's not hexic because it is, but it's not. <laughs> what do I mean by that? You can use substitution like a cubed equals c. And that gives you, hopefully you see what I'm seeing. And this gives you c squared minus c plus one over 27 equals zero, which means this equation is indeed quadratic or bicubic or something like that. Now you can solve this equation easily. That's gonna give you the c values, negative b, plus minus the square root of b squared, which is one, minus four ac, which is one minus four over 27 divided by two. And if you simplify this a little bit, one plus minus is gonna give you 27 minus four, which is 23 over 27. Obviously you can, uh, if you want square root 27, write it as three root three or something like that. No, not necessary. But from here, you can basically find the solutions because what is C? C is A cube, but at the same time B cube. So if you set it equal to A cube, you're gonna find two results from here because of the plus minus. And one of them is going to be an A, the other one is going to be a B. But you don't really care which one is which. But the thing is, we know that X is equal to A plus B. That's what matters. So the sum is going to give us the solution. So we're going to have to cube root these numbers. Okay. So the solution is going to be pretty interesting. And I'm going to show you, I think I included the result from uh, Wolfram Alpha. Hopefully I did not forget that. Oops. One of these should be a plus sign. And the other one, I'm going to use a minus sign. But that's basically what it is. Easy, right? <laughs> Great. Find the other solutions and you'll be uh, amazed. <laughs> okay. So, but that's one of the solutions. What about the other two solutions? They're probably complex. And finding them requires a lot of work, which we're not going to get into because there's too much work. I'm going to leave it to you as an exercise if you want to deal with that. Um, and I'm lazy. So, but anyways, let me show you the first method next. The first method actually, after doing the transformation, so let's pick it up from here where we had the y to the fifth plus y to the fourth plus one. Now let's say you did not know how to factor it, right? What would you do? Well, you can kind of assume the following. You can say, okay, since this is a quintic, maybe I can split it into a cubic and a quadratic because you can't do two quadratics and maybe a linear factor is possible. But let's go ahead and do this. y cubed plus ay squared plus by plus c, that's my cubic factor. And the other factor is just gonna be quadratic y squared, and then we can continue with dy plus e. e is not differential here, it's just a constant, okay? A coefficient. Now, here's what you're supposed to do next. I'm gonna leave this with you, because again, that's gonna take a lot of work, but here's the idea. We're gonna start distributing, that's gonna give us y to the fifth, and then think about how you could get y to the fourth. You can multiply y to the third with dy, which is going to give you dy to the fourth. And I'm going to try to collect the coefficient of y to the fourth and then just put it all together. So that's one of the terms that we're going to get y to the fourth. Another way you can get y to the fourth, because there's no cube here, is multiplying the square by square, right? So this is going to be the next one, which is a. So d plus a is going to be the coefficient of y to the fourth. But guess what? We have y to the fourth, so it's going to be one. Great. What about the y cubed? Well, y cubed can come from y cubed times e, which is going to give you e as one of the coefficients. And then there's another way to get y cubed, which is ay squared times dy, which is ad. So ad is going to be another coefficient of y cubed. And you could multiply by by y squared, which is going to give you b. And there's no other one because there's no y cubed in the second expression. Again, uh, those are all the coefficients. We'll put it all together and that's going to be the coefficient of y cubed. But guess what? There's no y cubed here, so the coefficient of y cubed is going to have to be zero. That gives you a really nice equation to work with, but you'll just continue in the same manner. What about y squared? To get y squared, you need to multiply a by e, so that's going to give you one of the coefficients, which is ae. Another y squared can come from by and dy, which is going to give you bd. And the last one is c times y squared, which is just c. And that's going to be the coefficient of y squared. That's super painful, but that's the work. And what about y squared? There's no y squared, so the coefficient of y squared is just going to be zero again. You see, that's going to give you really cool equations. And you're going to come up with a system, right? This is one. These are zeros. What about the y? Where does y come from? y comes from b, y, and e, so that's going to give you b, e. And then another y can come from c times d, y, which is c, d. And those are all the y's you can get. That's the coefficient of y. And then I'll continue. Of course, this continues. And then finally, I have a constant, which is one, and that's gonna come from CE only. Constant times constant is the only way to do it, right? So now if you proceed with the 
coefficients, like the comparison, there's no y, so this is going to be 0. The constant term is 1. If c and e are integers, you could probably guess, okay, maybe this is 1, 1, or negative 1, negative 1. Again, that gives leaves you with fewer choices. You can plug them in, solve the system, find a, b, c. As you know, those numbers are all integers. But yes, it's a little painful. Let's go ahead and check the result from Wolfram from Alpha. Hopefully, I did not forget to include that here. Come on, last page. Come on, let's go. Yay! I did remember to do it. And as I said earlier, these are going to be the real, non-real, sorry, non-real complex solutions. And this is the real solution, which is what we express as that crazy radical, right? That's an approximation. And the rest are these. Do you like them? Those look complex, don't they? Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. By the way, I have another channel that focuses on complex numbers. Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI. And bye-bye.